Ricky Phillips with us. How are you, man? Big man. How are you, man? Doing good, man. Doing good. Of course, uh, Ricky Phillips, bassist for Sticks, uh, with the babies back in the day, a band that I absolutely loved. And he's got a lot going on, including this uh, new Ronnie Montrose album. It's the final album that Ronnie Montrose did before his uh, tragic passing. Uh, album called 10 by 10. It's actually out today. And we're going to talk about that. I know you produced that album, Ricky. Uh, ha- let me ask you, how long have you been with Sticks now? One of my favorite bands ever. It's been some time you've been with the boys, huh? Man, I started my 15th year about a month ago. Wow. Uh, it doesn't seem possible, but yeah. How did that go? Uh, How did that phone call go when they asked you to join the band? That's kind of a funny story, actually, because um, Todd Zuckerman and I loved working together, and we were, uh, did a lot of session work in Los Angeles together, and he called me, mm-hmm. and he found out that Tommy and J.Y. were going to offer me the, the gig, and so he said, can I be the first one to call him? And he was like, you got to sit down, man. you gotta, I got to talk to you. And I said, what, are you okay? What's going on? <laughs> well, I just found out, blah, blah, blah. And, what are you going to say? Are you going to? Are you? Are you too? Are you too busy? Or can you? Would you? That'd be great, man. I didn't even know you were on their radar. I know. I said, dude, take a pill, calm down. It's cool. And I said, wow, really? <laughs> he goes, yeah. Well, Tommy's going to have to call you, but I wanted to be. And I, I just, how cool is that? You know, You're right? that, that special relationship between a bass player and a drummer, and I've got my bro. He's got my back, and he's wanting to call me. I just thought it was well, the coolest way anyone could bring you in. And then, of course, I talked to Tommy and. We ran down what would have to be done and how much material I'd have to learn and how quickly I'd have to learn it. And I had just, I was doing a lot of, mostly just all production at that time, except for working with Ronnie. And uh, I uh, had just accepted 23 pieces of music I had to write and record in three weeks, right when they called me. So that was a, lot, that was a fun time. I don't think I slept for three weeks. Yeah, that's how, that's how it happened. And, and uh, it's just been a blast. It's a, such a great family. And we have so much, much, we have a blast on stage together every night. Now, Ricky, were you a fan of the band uh, before joining? Were you always a Styx fan? Uh, or no? No, I was <laughs> a fan of, of Styx is so diverse. Yeah. I, I, I was a fan of the prog side of Styx. I thought they were badass. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the, the, the prog uh, intro to light up. Sure. Bah, 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 bah. You know, it's just like, wow, what the hell is this? Right. It's like a movie soundtrack. And, and I love that kind of stuff. I, and I also like Blue Collar Man and Too Much Time in My Hands, and of course, Renegade and uh, Sweet Madam Blue, which right. is like Zeppelin esque sort of thing. The, the tougher edge stuff, I kind of come from that tougher edge place. So when I came into the band, uh, Tommy really wanted that, but he wanted me to be able to respect what Chuck had done. And uh, in the band, so I learned every every single note that Chuck played. I learned before um, I, you know, tried to do anything. It took me a while to figure out how to really be myself in that band. I knew I didn't want a karaoke situation. So Todd Zuckerman, the drummer, when Johnny passed, they brought Todd in, and he's, you know, he's got a following around the world. He's an incredible awesome drummer. drummer. He figured awesome out a drummer. way to to play all those songs, but to do it so that it sounds like him, and I, and I knew that's what I needed to do. So it, it took me a, a while. It took me probably close to a year to figure out completely how to do that. But uh, And Chuck is great. Chuck is still very much a part of the band. He's had health issues, which is no secret. But when we bring him out, um, he and I play together. At one point, I play guitar um, on Fooling Yourself. When he comes out, we introduce him in the set. Um, and, you know, we figured it out. We just It's a brotherhood, and everybody's... Uh, Everybody who can be and still wants to be to play nice, it, it can be a part of it. Yeah, it seems like everybody gets along so well. It's a, just a great chemistry up there. Uh, speaking of that old prog sound of Sticks, the new album just has that old school Sticks feel from the early days. The the Mission, the uh, oh, new okay. album from Sticks, love it. It's good stuff. Well, then I'll say Mission accomplished because that's exactly <laughs> what we we set out with. And I got to give Tommy the credit here with great detail to make sure uh, this wasn't. Hey, look, look how we sound now. You know, it's uh, it, we want it to be an extension of a of a vast, you know, uh, vast catalog that that uh, sounded like the same band. And, and so, I mean, I didn't play any of the active basses I play on stage, for example. People who are mu- musicians will only understand what that means. But uh, I played all my old Fender basses, a um, couple uh, sixty eight Kellys, which is one of my favorite sounding basses, and um, uh, I have an, a sixty P bass and a 62 and 63 jazz bass that I played on the record and tried to get those tones. Um, Chuck played Fenders a lot. He did play Rickenbacker at a certain point, but he, and Olympics, but he 
on most of those big recordings, it's 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 a Fender P bass, and so I appropriately try to get those sounds, and uh, and everybody did. Tommy tried to get the sounds he used to get, so did JY, um, and we approached the vocal stacks the same way as the original stuff did, and used more of the analog sounds of keyboards rather than all of the the hi-fi sort of uh, sounds that you you know you hear these days, and yeah. So yeah. thank you for noticing that. Absolutely. We, did, we definitely try to get that. Great sounding album. Uh, Sticks the Mission out now. First uh, new material from Sticks in 14 years. Uh, I want to ask you real quick. I saw John Waite recently, who still sounds great. He had a, his band with him. He did a record in-store thing where he did a performance and all. Have you spoke with your uh, f- former uh, bandmate and the babies, John Waite, over the years, or any of the other guys? Yeah, and I will say this. Uh, John, I think John sounds better than ever. Right? Uh, he opened up for us a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe he's up, I think he's opened up for us like three times in the last couple years. And uh, after it's said, I'm always going, dude, are, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, how do you sound like you're you're still like 26? You right. know? Uh, and he, he kind of laughs and goes, I don't know, man. He's, I, I think it may be because he's doing less shows and he's not stressing out of his voice. Cause that guy's got a ridiculous throat, man. He can sing. Yeah, he's a great um, singer. Man. The band is good. Yeah, it sounds great. Was so there ever awesome. talk of you getting back with uh, John? I know the, the some of the guys from the original Babies have gotten back together and reformed the band. Was there any talk of you and John being part of that, or was it just not something yeah, you were interested in? Yeah, I think in? so, but in, in due respect to those guys, I mean, they should be... Tony and Wally, really, when they play together, it sounds like the Babies. They really have uh, a root part of the sound. Um, John, is gone. John doesn't want to repeat anything. I understand that. I'm okay with going back and having reunion tours and things like that. I don't think, but I have the luxury of also being in sticks, so um, it probably is a little different. Um, I would love to do it. I love all my old bands. I love Bad English, you know. I'd love to see that, but it's the same thing that sticks goes through. You know, everybody's got to learn how to play nice. And, and That's right. There's all these personalities that seem to click and, and, and some that don't. So, um, yeah, it's always part of the equation. So we probably won't see the Dennis D. Young return to Sticks anytime soon. <laughs> I'll just don't hold you about that. <laughs> All I right. I don't see it. I don't see it happening. But you know, I don't. I, I don't want to make that call because as soon as I do, something else will happen. So um, you never know. But I. I just. I, I just I got too much information to. Uh, I, I, I'm Vegas. Vegas odds are very extreme, I'll say that. I got gotcha. you. Well, real quick, the Ronnie Montrose album, the final one that he did, you produced this. You got together with him, uh, Eric Singer from Kiss. Way back in 2003, you guys were working on this. So this is a project that you've been working on for a long time. Uh, 10 by 10 is the album. Tell us real quick about it and what we can expect from the new album. Well, it's it's really strong material from a guy who's the most stunning guitar playing uh, I've heard in some time is Ronnie Loudon Proud on this record. He passed before the solos were done, but all the, anyone who knows Ronnie Montrose and the band Montrose and, and where Sammy Hagar came from, his playing is so incredible on this record. And the guys that came in to play the solos are, are amazing as well. A lot of friends. And the singers go from uh, Sammy Hagar, Edgar Winter, um, if you're Eric, Mr. Big fan, Eric Martin from Mr. Big does an amazing job on, on his track. We've got Glenn Hughes from Deep Purple and, and Greg Raleigh, who's uh, not only in Santana, but started and was in Journey um, in the heyday of, uh, of the band. And, and you know, it's, there's all these incredible performances. Mark Bonilla, uh, who was Keith Emerson's guitar player, plays so instead Steve Lukather plays on the, the San Diego track. They'd never worked together. Um, Joe Bonamassa. It it's an all-star cast on this album. Book. Yeah, it's just it's just a studded record, and uh, it's it's really something that uh, today's the release day of that record, and I am just so happy and proud that it, that it's done. I know I know Ronnie's beaming. But three weeks before Ronnie passed, he said, "I really want to see ten by ten finished. I've got my strength back. I've been playing. My chops are up. He had gotten cancer, and that's led not the general public probably knows that." Um, and he, uh, he was gone like, uh, three weeks later, um, after he g- gave me that message. So, um, I took it upon myself to get her done and, and here we are. 
Well, uh, good for you to put it together. Thanks for doing it. Ricky Phillips producing the new Ronnie Matros album, 10 by 10. Good stuff. RickyPhillips.com. Check him out. I know you got to go pick up the new record. All the best to you, Ricky, uh, with you and Sticks and everything else going on. Thanks, Tick, man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks.